Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is December 5th, 2016, and this is our episode number 36. Today we're looking at a new Brazilian public company, which I've randomized. Its name is Eco Rodovias. So Eco Rodovias probably makes, uh, uh, manages uh, highways. So collects tolls, and maintains uh, highways. Let me just go to BMF's pages and, and take a look at its core activity statement. So it mentions logistics too here. So infrastructure and logistics. Let's see what it says. Okay, so exploits directly or indirectly uh, concessions of public services and public works in the logistical organization of cargo transportation so yeah not too far off there here's its website great um, not the most self-explanatory website but let's just uh, go and take a look at uh, it's debt over equity as we've been doing for pretty much every company so far um, if you haven't watched the past episodes uh, I go at quite quite some length about the importance of debt over equity in terms of assessing the financial health of a company and how the range that goes from 0 to 0 0.5 in debt over equity is an acceptable range and everything outside that range uh, is deemed dangerous for a, a not very advanced investor and for that matter even for an advanced investor so here we find the uh, investor relation relações com investidores so go there and then we try to find like uh, results okay here's third quarter results let's see what they offer here hopefully an ITR here if you have haven't watched past episodes an ITR is like the standardized statement this does not look like it but sometimes they put it in the end yes this is not it apparently let's see if they have a proper ITR I think the ITR as a first thing to look at is good because it's really clean. It's supposed to be like standard, like you, you can see one, one ITR for every company and it has the same structure. So let's see here. So here apparently is the actual ITR. Right. Let's see. Yes, it's right here. I use two monitors, so it, it pops up in the other monitor. Uh, I think one of the most interesting aspects of learning and of de developing a point of view on something is the order of the information you consume we are uh, victims to all sorts of biases that's completely unavoid unavoidable it's part of like being human being alive and we have a very limited control over uh, our biases but i think if you are aware of the order of information you consume about a certain uh phenomenon uh you have a little bit more control over the outcome over how you develop your point of view and therefore over how you live in this world so for example uh, you, you can look at any information first on a company right think about that you can look at you know the website you can go and buy its product you can talk to people who work there you can talk to people who who buy their products or use their services you can look at the stock price you can look at how many shares uh, over time 
have been outstanding. You can look at uh, profit. You can look at uh, you can look at anything. So the order you consume is very important, and it must be an individual decision. So there are people who are they look at the price movement of a company before anything else, and some of them are quite successful. You know, you can't take that away from them. Uh, I prefer, in my naivete, like, you know, I don't have uh, enough uh, evidence to, to support, like, this is the one best way. But I think I feel comfortable uh, starting with debt over equity because it's a very, very practical way to have a look at the most to me fundamental safety I can get from a company so if the company is fundamentally uh, unsafe so it, it just owns little uh, compared to what it owes it has no nowhere to run if it runs into trouble and it's inviting trouble by, by having a lot of debt to me that's the first thing I want to look at because uh, I may look at a company and it, you know it fell its price fell by a ton and I may think wow this stock is really cheap so let's just get it you know but it's a it's a truism in, in the investing world that when a stock falls a lot most of the time it's for a good reason or you may look at a, a company's price and and see that it went up by a lot or consistently going up and you may think wow this stock is going up so it's gonna continue going up uh, and you just develop a, some bias from your first information it's so important right this first information bias and you know the the stock may be ending its its great run or maybe it's being speculated upon but these things never go to infinity right they go to zero but they don't go to infinity so with that said thanks for bearing with me there uh we just do debt over equity and uh the itr is great because also you skip on the propaganda really right the advertisement that uh companies tend to make in their results uh documentation whenever they can do you know their thing they they will st st even unconsciously uh but probably very consciously try to paint a rosy picture there so what we do here uh well patrimonio liquido is the net equity right this number is always just there right so here we see four five four four hundred and fifty four million for uh, this trimester very striking to see Th this second column is about the last year the last full year right so it ended uh, nine months ago with about almost three times the net equity so the net equity has gone down by two-thirds that's very high that's very significant right so the company lost 1 billion in net equity so we just save that information for 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 later or we go back to this if we see that uh echo rodovia survives this screening criteria so echo rodovia 3t16 so the net equity is five four five four and now we add up the debt so let's try to find okay we have impressions and financiamentos right loans and financing so you see the child entry here which gives you a little bit better uh detailing of what this is so debentures is bonds 
So we have 41 here. This is short term, payable in the short term. Um, so they have this other obligation that it's amazing like how much they, they put it here. They put it as this without discriminating. So you have 2.5 times the amount owed in bonds under this other obligation that you just don't know what it is but for your safety I would say that this is dead you won't shoot yourself in the foot if you take the safe path here so for the long term we have zero as loans and financing but then you have as other obligation you have 884 million okay So, in my math here, even not being extremely draconian with the criteria, we reach one billion thirty-one in debt. So one, oh, three, one. So two point two seven in debt over equity. So that's over four times our maximum acceptable range for uh, debt over uh, debt over equity okay just for a uh, a little bit more detail in here if you're still with me let's go to Morningstar and go to Echo Rodovias Then we go to key ratios. And scroll down to financial health and scroll all the way down. Okay. So what do we get here? We have debt over equity and okay, they're giving 9.8 as the latest quarters debt over equity. Um Let's try to find out how they came to this to this uh, math. Another thing we can do is add the circulating liabilities, which is the uh, liabilities uh, due within the next 12 months, and we add the non-circulating liabilities. This is, I would say, is the more draconian. Uh, addition of all debt okay so they're getting 165 plus I'm oh, sorry let me fix that 166 plus 884 so that's our 1050 so this is what I do sometimes uh, I do a different assessment. So, passivo means liabilities, circulating, which means next 12 months, and not circulating, which means longer term. Okay. So, even doing like doing it like that. We don't get to 9.8. So that is a complete mystery to me, how they got, got to 9.8. It may have been the last uh, trimester and they haven't uh, updated it. But 9.8 is a tremendously high number for that. So I just don't understand what, where that came from. This is just to illustrate like how, how error prone we are and if we trust things without uh, going to the source of the information ourselves we may be completely misled uh, one good thing here is that however different the measurements may be they don't contradict themselves in the sense that we should uh, not 
uh, pursue Echo Rodovias as an investment at the moment. And we're well advised to keep looking for other companies. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't watched the past 35 episodes, just go and watch them. I'll be very happy. And I hope to see you in future episodes. Thank you so much. Have a great day.